Hi, my name is Mike Aben. Welcome to Kerbal Space Program 1.4.1. Yes, the newest version of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, I know I got this other series to do, but it's really quick for me to make these videos. And I will be posting a video for my series that I'm starting to wrap up. But I thought I would post this video. You can tell me what you what you think, whether you like it or not. In particular, what I'm interested in is the Making History DLC which uh, I believe was dropped yesterday, at least that's when I downloaded it, and I was playing it myself last night, and I went through the very first mission. There's a lot of stuff in this DLC. I'll leave it for you to decide whether it is that you like it or whether you don't like it. That's a, a personal decision for yourself. But um, I will be up front right off the bat. I've had issues with crashing. Uh, it's a little bit disheartening. I'll point out some of the places where I think... Uh, you know, where I've had issues with crashing and I've gotten on the forums and other people, I've heard other people having the same complaint, so I don't think this is unique to me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through just the first mission. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. If you want me to start going through these other missions, which you can see I've not played yet, that's perfectly up to you. The first time through this mission, I did get a silver. Um, I'm have mixed feelings about games that give you sort of these three levels of achievements you know the three star idea uh I, I i i get it it's really really popular myself personally i get really annoyed if i don't get the three stars <laughs> and that leaves me getting fixated on getting three stars which usually leaves me getting frustrated at some point because most games make it really hard for you to get three stars on everything which usually gets me to stop playing that game but uh We'll go for the gold. We'll see what happens. I'm trying to get better. If I don't get gold, I won't get too upset. I find it's best. I'm going to reset this. Restart this mission. Uh, still gives me my three star here. And then I'm going to start this. And I'm going to point as I go through places where I think, I don't know, that things aren't quite right. In my mind, anyway. Who knows? This is early days. Maybe patches will come out. I don't know. Well, let's get started. So, greetings! This mission tests your metal at the dawn of the space age. You'll build a basic rocket to reach a low altitude. Next, you'll build a high altitude sounding rocket that will take a temperature reading from the upper atmosphere. And finally, you'll create Kerbin's first artificial satellite, Jebnik-1, and complete an orbit of Kerbin. Awesome! So, you can see here is our requirements. we got to reach 5,000 meters of altitude easy enough uh, but our preferable landing is near the old island uh, airfield on the island this is something that actually these mission this is where the bronze silver gold bit comes from is they have optional components for you to see if you can meet them or not uh, and landing at the airfield is an optional component you, if you land anywhere I believe this mission is successful but if you can land it on the airfield uh, on that island then you get the kind of bonus points or whatever it is oh uh, let's see I already have the vessel because I've done this once before so I'm not going whoa, whoa what is this there are incompatible craft files in the folder not now yeah I know there's of course there's incompatible oh boy yeah that's okay I'm not gonna worry about it <laughs> let's see what happens here's the vessel here um, you do have limitations like if you go down the list here you can see there's not a whole lot of parts for you to play with this one you're forced to have to use the Sleeputnik probe um, there's really not a huge amount to it uh, you are forced to keep this under 3.3 tons and actually I kind of like that part of this because what that forces you to do is to take out some of the fuel on this booster. So in a way, it's kind of teaching you how to do some things by forcing you to realize, hey, I can take the thrust out of the booster or some of the fuel out of the booster. I've so start mission. And this is going to, I'm going to mention the first thing. And you can decide whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. I think this is an attempt to make these things a little bit tougher than they would uh, otherwise be. But I'm going to push escape here and notice that the revert option is grayed out. Um, you can't revert back to the VAB. Once you get past the first part of this mission, um, you can start to revert back your flights but you can't revert back to the VAB. So if you find that your vessel's not appropriate for what it is that you want to do, 
well too bad you have to revert back to the start of the mission and there's three flights to this mission so that means if you need to restart the mission you're going all the way back to this little guy right here um that can be a little bit frustrating or you can consider that an extra challenge i don't know it's up to you thing is it's pretty easy to subvert that by simply saving before you go into the vab so i don't know when you if you're going to it sounds like something they did to make this more challenging, but if you're if it's easy for the player to subvert the challenge, what's the point? I, I would not have personally grayed out this revert flight, let you freely go back to the VAB and try this as many times as you want. Anyway, the island airport is kind of in this direction. There's no SAS on the state putnik, there's no throttle control, so we just gonna hit the space bar. And we are off. And I am just going to pitch a little bit forward here. Give us a bit. There we go. Let that settle out. And I can see I need to go a little bit to the left too. So I can do that too. You do want to get some decent amount of altitude here. Oh, oh, it works. I mean, of course it works. Look at your rocket flying. Keep it up. Head for 5,000 meters. That is not going to be a problem. I'm going to pitch down. I think I might be getting a little bit too much altitude. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have meet the 5,000 meters. Try to land on the old runway. Of course, I will try to land on the old runway, but I think I need to come more this way. And we are almost out of fuel. And then we're going to go into gliding mode. Okay, I do need to come more this way. You see, I do have some limited control of this thing, which is good. I've got a lot of altitude, that's for sure. Let's go back this way. Get it sort of, sort of right up on the nav ball. So the little birdie, you know, blue is up. Well, sky, uh, sky up, ground down is always going to make it easier for you to fly. Unless you were really good with your three-dimensional reasoning. Okay, now let's pitch up. And I'm just going to hold pitch up so that I have some gliding ability with this thing. Limited gliding ability. I mean, it's uh, glide to fall ratio is about one to one. <laughs> so calling it a glider is generous for sure but I think I'm gonna make it onto the runway you want to get as close as you can to this waypoint the waypoint there's a radius on it you see there's 192.8 meters you want to come within that you come within that you get the optional bonus for this mission you land anywhere else and I think it'll just give it to you I think that's how it works we should be able to get within 192 meters of that waypoint Fact, if anything, I'm going to let it drop a little bit. Now we're into V2 mode. <laughs> Werner von Braun has nothing on me. And as we're going down here, um, there are a lot of parts that are added into it. Uh, 1.875 meter parts in particular, including two crude capsules, which I really like. I, I don't particularly care about the historic nature of it. I really like more the functionality of it. Um, but of course, you could use the argument there are mods that give you pretty much the same thing that if you're a PC user, you can get for free. Okay, when I'm just about over this, I want to deploy. Let's see how close we get. Oh, I'm a, a smidge short, I think. And I do have, you have limited ability to direct this as you come down. We are definitely going to come within the 192 meters, though. That's not going to be a problem. Uh, you also have limited batteries. Uh, batteries were not one of the parts that were available, so the only electricity storage is in the state putnik here, and you can see, yeah, it's coming down pretty quick. Anyway, let's speed this up. Get her down. We are most certainly within the requirement. And skabunk, there we are. Eureka, it works, it really works. With what we've learned, you can start building bigger and better rockets until we finally reach the stars. Your next assignment is to create a sounding rocket, one that can reach much higher altitude. 
good luck. And what I have found is if I recover this vessel, and especially if I go back to the main menu and then try and continue this mission, game freezes. So with that in mind, this is one of the things that hopefully will get worked on. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the Space Center, leave a vessel there, and go on to the next mission. So that's number one. There we go. Okay, uh, so you must now, you must build vessel K-7B, higher altitude sounding rocket to continue the mission. Now, here's another thing that kind of bugs me a little bit. If you click, this is the full thing about what's involved with the mission. This includes all three flights. It's a little bit confusing to wrap your head around because of the way in which this is organized, what the requirements are. But this one, and really, it's, you only discover this when you try it for the first time, and with your inability to revert, this is a little bit frustrating. This does give you some waypoints that you can, these are the optional part for you to fly through. And uh, if you can fly through these waypoints, you get your bonus points. Um, the main thing is to reach up the 48 kilometers and then come back down to the surface. But here's what frustrates me, okay? You can sort of see these requirements in this list here, but if I go into the VAB and then take a look at what they say here, here it just says rocket flies to a minimum altitude of 48 kilometers, takes a temperature reading, and returns to Kerbin. As far as you can tell, that's the only requirement. And so you build your rocket to do that, and then all of a sudden, it starts chirping in with, hey, let's try and fly through these waypoints, and hey, let's try and do that, and you probably built something that in no way in the situation that you're in, and you're going to be able to direct it towards these waypoints, and guess what? You can't revert back to the VAB. I don't know. In my mind, that, that feels pretty, pretty cheap. And again, if you restart the mission, you're back to the beginning of the first flight. Okay, here is the vessel, my K7B high altitude sounding rocket. Thankfully, it was a pretty simple thing to build. Uh, a couple of features, one new fairing. I, I do like how you can change sort of the color schemes on the fairing a little bit, but you can't do that with a lot. Most of the old parts are still the same as they used to be. You can't change the textures on them. Uh, not much to it really. Had to have the stay put nick on it again. Need temperature thing, of course. The engine is the swivel engine, so I do have some gimbal control on that. And of course, there's gimbal con uh, attitude control on these tail fins. No reaction wheels still, so you have limited, you know, uh, or do you yeah, there's no reaction wheels at all because there's none built into the state putnik. So limited, if you're not under thrust and if you're thin parts of the atmosphere, you basically have last attitude control. So let's, uh, we'll save this and we'll launch it. Yes, continue mission. Okay, for this leg of the mission, you need to fly above 48 kilometers and take a sounding temperature reading, then splash down in the ocean a long way east. A skilled pilot can fly with precision. We've marked a couple of nodes for you to attempt to fly through. And like I said, this is the first time, if you didn't take a look at the detailed mission planner that comes under this here, if you didn't take a look at that, that's the first time they've mentioned these waypoints for you to fly through, and you don't have the ability to go back to the VAB. I, I don't know. To me, it doesn't seem fair. But anyway, here are the waypoints. We have the easy, medium, and hard waypoints. And the difficulty is that, you know, this one you have to get within 2,500 meters of. This one you have to get in within 5,000 meters of. This one you have to get in within 10,000 meters of. Uh, let's select you as an activation. Uh, well, I will try and fly through this, the hard one. And then they have their landing zone which is not appearing yet, is they want you to apply here. But again, they don't tell you that until after you take the temperature scan. I don't know. doesn't seem fair to me. First time I did this, of course, I just kind of went more or less straight up and just casually tried to land in the ocean. And by the time I was at the proper altitude, there was no way for me to hit those waypoints. So, let's see, we can see the waypoints. So I kind of want to go in that direction. It's a little bit north of east. We have to throttle up now because we have an LFO engine. And, uh, well, let's, we'll, we'll see how this goes, so. There we go. Whoa, back east. Okay, lights, I don't know. I'm not reading that. Oh, okay. I don't know what just happened here. Did I lose some waypoints? Okay, let's cut engine here. What happened there? That's the easy one, but why did these other waypoints disappear? 
I didn't read Werner's message. What was his message? It's down this one. History made. What was this? You are already higher than any. I know. Yeah, whatever. That's not helpful. I don't know why these other ones disappeared. Did I do something right? I, I find the, the amount of feedback this gives you is pretty. No, I don't know why those disappeared. Oh, I'm above my altitude, so I don't know. Confused. Okay, let's uh, deploy the fairing here, and I put the um, temperature scan, there we go, on an action group. Again, I have no control right now because I'm not under thrust or limited control in the engine here. Yeah, it doesn't look like I did these right, so I don't know. Oh, there's my, now I want to hit this target, see? Suddenly that's popped up. So what I want to do is start extending my flight here a little bit. Let's give myself a little thrust so I have a, some attitude control. Try and push that trajectory out that way. Now, you only if you look at the radius here, it's like 63 kilometers, so you, you it's not hard to hit that. Yeah, to me, I don't know, that's pretty poor, you know, that those waypoints disappeared, and it never, you know, these didn't check off. Last time, when I got the easy one, which I got before, there was a little check mark there. Clearly, I didn't get it. So I don't think I'm going to be getting gold, because I think this is the thing that I kind of messed up here, is I didn't, you know, uh, I think you have to get at least one of these two if you're going to get gold, but it didn't happen, and I don't know why they disappeared. So let's, no, let's, let's lose the booster here. So stage, there we go, just got this little guy. Uh, only a stay putnik and then this little structural part here for a base. And yeah, I'm gonna definitely come within 63 kilometers so that's not gonna be an issue. All right, we believe our rocket technology is ready for the final test. A satellite that can orbit Kerbin do not let us down. Okay, and again, we're just going to go, we're going to leave this here out in the water, and we're going to go back to Space Center. All right, you must now build Jebnik 1 to continue the mission. Now, I mentioned before about parameters that are thrown into these missions without you knowing. Um... This one, oh, I guess it does say it. I guess I can't. The, the key here is that you're equatorial, but if you are not careful, here's a little bit of a <laughs> thing that slipped in here that's easy to miss. You're not launching from the KSC. You're launching from their alternate launch site. I love the fact that the game now in stock has an alternate launch site. I think that's brilliant. It would be nice to know that because this alternate launch site is at a latitude of about 45 degrees getting to an equatorial orbit is going to be expensive and so you have to design your vehicle according to that so anyway hidden parameters that makes me angry especially with the fact that you can't again revert to the VAB I keep reminding people of that so if you build a, uh, a vessel that is completely inadequate to getting to an equatorial orbit from a launch site that's at a latitude of 45 degrees well sucks to be you you're starting all over again unless you did a save and thought ahead of time anyway a uh, quickie look at the payload let's start with the payload Again, you are forced to use the State Putnik. Um, they do give you access to the Probo Dobodyne QBE, the little cube guy. Uh, that at least gives you SAS and a little bit extra electricity. In my mind, not enough electricity, so I put on all these extra little batteries. Let's talk about because this one does have some new parts here. Um, you have to build this lifter is ridiculous. It has it. It has something like. 4,500 or something meters per second of delta V, way more than it is required to get the job done. Um, but the thing is, it has a minimum mass. Where's the minimum mass required? There, the minimum mass is 30 tons. So you have to get under 30 tons. So you're kind of forced to build something kind of ridiculous in my mind. Uh, has a lot of new parts here. I can see I changed the color scheme to this orangey color, which I like. There, and the whole thing is that orangey color. Uh, these are the new 1.875 meter parts with these radial 
um, boosters on the side. These don't detach. I didn't put any decouplers. It's just this whole thing's just a single stage because it wasn't necessary to put, get fancy with it. Uh, it does have solid fuel in it, which I took out, and I'm assuming the solid fuel, given how little there is, is for some solid fuel separation boosters, I think. Little separation rockets. Uh, I kind of like that. That's cool. We won't be seeing them, though. The main engines down here at the bottom is these new Kodiak engines that... Um, I th think uh, my my rocket science. I think they're modeled after the the Soviet Soyuz style rocket engines, the R sevens. Do I have that right? Please tell me I have that right. <laughs> uh, anyway, we got three clusters of those, and what also we got new part are these actual. You know, the game had these things that they called Werner engines before. These ones are actually really acting like Werner because there's no gimbling on these guys, so you do need these guys for attitude control. Uh, I like that those are there because they actually you actually need them um, because there are no reaction wheels once again. Um, and you can see also I have no control surfaces on it because so the, the attitude control is completely on those guys, which I like. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so, why don't we launch this thing? This is the alternate launch site. You can see there's nothing here but this launch pad. I, I have no idea how they got the rocket here. <laughs> and the launch site is up here. There's the original launch site that way. It's way up here. Uh, and it is at a latitude. I'm pretty sure it's pretty much exactly 45 degrees. You'll see that once we do our launch. But... There is, you can't get to an equatorial orbit. Um, you cannot launch into an inclination that is lower than your latitude. That's impossible. So the lowest inclination of our resulting orbit is going to be about 45 degrees. That's how I know this is at 45 degrees because that's the inclination we're going to get in our orbit. Um, so I am going to simply put on the SAS because I do have SAS now. I'm going to throttle up and we are going to launch and we're going to pitch east, which I think is that way over the mountains. Let's go. Cut this when our apoapsis gets up to 100 kilometers. Oh, oh, cause sleep went a little higher. That's okay, we'll have to do some orbital tweaking anyway. All right, we are on our way up. And I have no attitude control now, so this thing is just going to tumble and bumble. Uh, again, no reaction wheels, no control surfaces. Uh, that's just what it is. <laughs> Once you're in space, you can use the time warp trick to freeze your rotation. But I'm not in space, so I can't do that. So it's just going to do this. Oh, we got a message. Only 10,000 meters to go until you exit the atmosphere. Keep it steady. Sure, I'll keep it steady. Can't you tell how steady it is? I'm going to give a little bit of throttle so I have some attitude control. Get it around here to prograde, stop, and then time warp to freeze that. Haha, -ha, there we go. I do like doing these kinds of missions. I just wish the sort of bugginess of it was was taken away. I, I know a lot of people are sandbox type player games, and I, I actually you know, great power to you. This is a beautiful sandbox game. I've never been a sandbox player. I need constraints. <laughs> I, so I like these artificial constraints. I like flying that I don't have reaction wheels. I, I find that I kind that kind of fun because in career mode you do unlock reaction wheels fairly quickly. Let's start throttling up here. Get on pro grade. There we go pitch down a little bit because my attitude. Ah, this can all be fixed later. Um, what was I saying? Yes, you you, you know, in, in career mode, you unlock reaction wheels fairly early. And in career mode as well, most of your first flights are all done with cripples. So you don't have this experience of not having attitude control um, or limited attitude control. I find that kind of fun. Oh, frick, there. there we go, close enough. Now, you can see here our inclination is super duper off. We need to bring down our inclination, and you need to budget for that. This You need a lot of delta V. This thing thankfully does. You need about, I think it was around 18, 1900 meters per second of delta V in your vessel to get that. I am coming too close to this descending node, so I'm going to put the, the maneuver node over here. So this gives me time to play. 
that's about it okay let's kill this you can see we are still off oh see all carbon shall he uh, hear our radio signal and just imagine what we've unlocked today however we cannot risk our rocket falling into enemy tech why did I get rid of that anyway it wants us to destroy the rocket but I'm pretty sure I have points available you can see we are a degree and a half off from equatorial I'm pretty sure there's points available for um, for uh, the dump dump for uh, getting this as close as you can to these two guys to a hundred and that to zero so since we can do that and there's no rush to deorbit this thing I'm gonna do that 90% so that means 10% but 10% of like a hundred kilometers is 10 kilometers which is pretty freaking inaccurate I'm with you. all right you know like I'm looking okay here we go uh, this is now 99.9 .9 kilometers and it's supposed to like is I got 99 999 99, meters it's supposed to be 930 meters. I mean, if that's not close enough, I don't know what is. This one is 100,304 meters, and it's supposed to be 70 meters rather than 304 meters. Again, that's pretty freaking close. Um, let's get ourselves over to here and get the inclination back down, but I, I'm thinking that accuracy does not have anything to do with the orbit maybe they want you to put it close to the Kerbal Space Center for your descent I don't know okay here we go hopefully we're gonna come pretty close to the Kerbal Space Center I have no real control over this thing obviously um, these little lights here are the Kerbal Space Center and I'm definitely coming short I don't know if you can see it in the video we are just coming down oh we're coming down right on top of the mountains the east of the K. Oh, look at this beautiful peak. Oh, what is that waypoint? Now there's a waypoint somewhere? Or maybe that's actually, that might be a vessel that I left. That's what that is. All right. Um, well, destroying won't be an issue. Hey, success. Uh, test accuracy, nothing there. Uh, bronze, I did worse than I did last time because I didn't get any of those little waypoints. Um, I don't know what test accuracy means. Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. If anyone knows what that means, please let me know. Uh, anyway, let me know what you think um, in the comments as far as this, as to what you think about this sort of mission idea that's into Kerbal Space Program now on this DLC. Also, let me know if you'd like to see me fumble through some more of these missions, or is this video better just as a one-off? Anyway, let me know in the comments. And in the meantime, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.